urgent paleontology news, everybody. Put your Topos Chico down. It's it's time to talk about the new Jurassic World movie that's coming out in a year somehow. Yeah, I'm, that's baffling. This oh is, my uh, god. We have two it, shots. Three yeah. shots of the movie and a short yeah. description. Still in yeah, We do. And we're going to milk it for content because that's what we do. Content. Because you little yes. hogs love this. Um, so, yeah, I guess we should just we'll put them on screen as we talk about them. But there are two uh, new stills that are apparently from the movie. Um, and one of them has Scarlett Johansson and a man who apparently many people are excited to see in the movie and who I have never heard of. Uh, he's from Bridgerton. Oh, oh okay. I see. Uh-huh. Okay. I've seen some Wh- of that which show. season I saw Bridgerton season one. Is he from the other seasons? Oh, I don't know. <sighs> Hold on. Oh, he's a paleontologist. Yes, sure. there's a paleontologist character in in hmm. in this in, film. In the, in the dinosaur film, you can tell he's a nerd because he has glasses. That's Fuck how you yeah. know he's a scientist. I mean, are right, glasses? Daly? Four out of five know. of us. Should we, should this is read, an accurate stereotype. Should we read the description of the movie? Yes. Oh yes, we should. Oh, he's Anthony in Bridgerton. Okay, I have seen him before. Now I understand why people like him. Whatever. Is that the one that? Uh, I think at some point he does. He's anyway. He's in it. He's in the movie. But yes, oh. Dalton, what's the synopsis? Well, the synopsis is, is thus. A new era is born. Next summer, three years after the Jurassic World trilogy concluded, with each film surpassing $1 billion at the global box office, and that's in-universe, the enduring <laughs> Jurassic series evolves in an ingenious new direction with Jurassic World Rebirth. Anchored by iconic action superstar Scarlett Johansson, Breakthrough talent Jonathan Bailey and two time Oscar registered trademark winner Mahershala Ali. This action packed new chapter sees an intrepid team racing to secure DNA samples from the three most colossal creatures across land, sea, and air. Also starring acclaimed international stars Rupert Friend and Manuel Garcia Rufo. The film is directed by dynamic visualist Gareth Edwards, Rogue One, a Star Wars story, from a script by original Jurassic Park screenwriter David Kett. Five years after the events of Jurassic World Dominion, the planet's ecology has proven largely inhospitable to dinosaurs. Those remaining exist in isolated equatorial environments with climates resembling the one in which they once lived. The three most colossal creatures within that tropical biosphere hold the key to a drug that will bring miraculous life-saving benefits to mankind. Academy Award registered trademark nominee Johansson plays skilled covert operations expert Zora Bennett, contracted to lead a skilled team on a top-secret mission to secure genetic material from the world's three most massive dinosaurs. When Zora's operation intersects with a civilian family whose boating expedition was capsized by marauding aquatic dinos, they all find themselves stranded on an island where they come face-to-face with a sinister, shocking discovery that's been hidden from the world for decades. Ali is Duncan Kincaid, Zora's most trusted team leader. Emmy nominee, uh... And Olivier Award winner Jonathan Bailey, Wicked in Bridgerton, plays paleontology doc- paleontology paleontologist Doctor Henry Loomis, Emmy nominee Rupert Friend, Homeland. Obi-Wan wait, wait, Kenobi. what was his last name? Friend. No, no, the paleontologist Loomis. Henry, Henry Loomis. Loomis. Like, like Doctor Loomis from Friday the Thirteenth, not Friday from a site from from Halloween. Doctor Loomis. Like I guess so, yeah. Jason's psychiatrist who kills him at the end. Yes, is that, apparently. Is this a crossover That's film? so cool. That's so dumb. Maybe I love the that. dinosaurs will Jason. Um, Rupert Friend, Homeland and Obi-Wan Kenobi, appears as big pharma representative Martin Krebs of the of the Krebs oh, yes. cycle. Uh, uh, yes, <laughs> uh, of cycle fame. <laughs> and Manuel Garcia Rulfo, the Lincoln lawyer, Murder on the Orient Express, plays Ruben oh, Delgado, the father of the shipwrecked civilian family. There's more stuff, but I'm tired of reading. Okay. That's fine. I think we have enough to work with there. I, I think so. So what um, is everyone's impression? Uh, do, we have a lot of information. And uh, I mean, this is paleontology in action here. We have two still images and a concept. And we're going to draw conclusions from them. Oh, so yes. much. Um, so yeah. one still well, image. Personally, has, me personally, oh, well, yes. Go ahead. Having, uh, having this information, I um, have decided that I hate it. And am smarter than everyone involved uh, for being able to check some things on Wikipedia and will be generally insufferable about it for a year until it comes out. <laughs> yes, that's uh, that's correct. Thank you. <laughs> the productive uh, attitude to have. Yes. Um, <laughs> all right. There's a couple things I want to say. 
one, I like Gareth Edwards a lot. I like I like him visually. Good director. I, mm-hmm. I think he's a good director. I don't think he's a fantastic script writer, but I think that's okay because he didn't write this script. Uh, no. yes. yeah. David Kep wrote the script, uh, and David Kep is the person who wrote Jurassic Park. So that's they're doing a not a bad sign. A full Force Awakens, right? Soft reboot. <laughs> well, I mean, that's probably what this is going to be. Hey, no, 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 it's, it's, it's not a fine. reboot. It's a rebirth. No. It's a soft <laughs> rebirth. <laughs> right. Ugh. Ugh. Let's, not, let's not say that ever again. Jurassic World <laughs> Revengeance. Yeah. It's not, uh, uh, so anyway, I I do like uh, I do really like Gareth Edwards' whole style and everything, mm-hmm. and so I think that he's a good fit for Jurassic Park. I think I think a guy with a, a good visual effects background who really knows how to make things seem big and intimidating. Yeah, the sense yeah, of good. scale I'm really looking forward to, yeah. and pretty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. These still images look good. Like, they look they really do. But they kind of look better than a lot of the like frames of the, the prior three. Well, they, yeah. There's I, color. Like a lot of nice saturated color. And, star- and sparks coming off the flare that Mahershala Ali is holding. Like it looks. Oh, yeah. It looks really nice. Um, yeah. I think they go to like there's a leaked image of a like some kind of temple in the jungle, too. I, I, that's I, I think there that's was something cool. about that from one of the sets. Yeah, I I think that stylistically, I think visually, this is going to be good. Um, the only thing that really concerns me about this movie is that is just how rapidly it's coming together. Like yeah. this was uh, eighteen months is not a long time to make a movie, and so no, it, either this is going to be no dinosaurs effectively, like very very sparse dinosaurs at all to have time for the visual effects, which could 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 happen and that could fit the movie well like yeah, it doesn't need to have not be bad in every film yeah, they could have friend. been cooking this for a while like well so i remember we had a chat about this back when it was announced and then i remember all of us were like oh yeah i bet they've been working on this for a while that it was like apparently they haven't started filming yet and it was like oh yeah i think principal photography might even still be happening it is and I um, also, yeah i mean not 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 in that filming, but maybe like some of the model. They might have had models and stuff ready. Well, well I, mean, I don't think they do because really? I was about to bring this up. So yeah, please keep. So going. Steve Brissati is coming back as the paleontological consultant, which is great. Yes, yes, I think. Um, like, let me uh, and just to be clear, I'm not a huge fan of the Jurassic World three movies at all. I don't think that's a secret from anybody on the channel. I don't think the problem with them was the scientific inaccuracy. I think the problem with them was that they were very, like weak movies. The yes. scientific inaccuracy is kind of orthogonal to that. It doesn't really change it. Um, Fair. One of the things I liked about Jurassic World Dominion was that there was clearly like Steve's influence was definitely clearly felt in the movie. Like there was clearly some attention being paid to getting some more things right putting feather dinosaurs in a big movie is all I could ever ask for. And it was a good thing to see. Um, and like the little guy, like the little Moros being like a very good reconstruction of a dinosaur with feathers. Mm. We haven't gotten to that in our Jurassic world series yet, but like cats. there's, there's uh, his, the cats, right. There's a lot of things that are clearly coming from Steve and that's good. So I'm, I'm really happy he's back as a paleontological consultant. Um, so he made a tweet about it cause he's apparently on the set right now in London. So we do know Tight. that photography is still happening. And uh, as of seven hours ago when he tweeted this. And also, he said he's salivating at the latest character designs from David Vickery and crew. Uh, from at David Vickery. And David Vickery is, uh, was the VFX supervisor for Dominion and Fallen Kingdom. Okay. So it sounds to me like they're still working on the models for the dinosaurs. Wow. Which well, means the new that ones, presumably. May, and may, right, but I mean that would be something I expected would have happened in pre-production, and this whole thing to me does seem extremely rushed. And I I wonder yeah. if there was something where they had to make another one quickly to get the rights retained mm. or something. Um, but I mean, they they made a movie three years ago. They're they're not they lapsing. Did. Yeah, I mean, maybe I, I don't know. I don't know what the contracts are like. You know, I mean, I, yeah, it, I maybe mean, we that. are kind of like, and I don't think this is this isn't fully the case because obviously, like movies always have taken a while to make. But maybe we're now finally kind of coming out of an extended period of like making movies during COVID took longer than normal. Yeah, I mean, and also I was thinking like, what if someone so I, whoever's responsible for this just like woke up from a dream in cold sweat and was like, I know exactly what to do, <laughs> and wrote it down on a napkin and like. 
I mean, like, I, but yeah. I in two years. It's just this is a basically like eighteen months. This is this is faster than I've ever heard about for a major like film being made. Like in, like indie films definitely, and that's why I'm thinking like I wonder if this is much smaller in scope. Which I, mean, I think I, I think that would be fine. Didn't I, they shoot I am Little Shop kind of Horrors in two days? I don't think so. But like, it's not even the principal photography, but just like just it's the pre production. Yeah. Like in January, they reported they were making the movie. A month later, they hadn't settled on a director. The original guy they tapped dropped out. Mm. It was replaced by Gareth Edwards. Like, this is all happening very quickly. I don't think that it's even... It's not even the principal production timeline. It's just like I am... Or the principal photography timeline, rather. I'm just a little concerned at what... I guess my concern is, is the abbreviated post-production timeline and seemingly like no pre-production pre period at all a symptom of this being a very different kind of movie that's going to be refreshing where it's like a much kind of like smaller scope thing that can be done be. quickly which would be fine uh, or is this like or is the studio causing some sort of like impending <clears throat> sched- scheduling crash here where like it's just not going to be able to come together fast enough i guess what i'm saying is i would not be surprised if this is delayed from july 2nd 2025 neither um, would i yeah, but I will I, say I I was just curious, so I looked it up what the kind of production cycle was for Jurassic Park three, because mm. I was thinking like what what like a smaller scale film in the franchise like Jurassic Park three is ninety minutes, it's it's tight, it basically has no plot, but like that's beside the point. They also did not have a script when they started filming. No, it. I mean besides besides oh all the God, script troubles leading up to Jurassic Park three, by the time they were actually like, hey, we're legitimately going to make this movie. Apparently, like production began in August of 2000, and it came out in 2001. So, like, wow. it's possible to turn around a decent-looking, serviceable Jurassic Park movie in a year. And but they, I, and I don't well, think that the deficiencies in Jurassic Park three are related to the quick turnaround time so much as the prolonged script issues. Well, I mean, like, I mean, I I would say though, I feel like those could be articulated to be very related. Like they. They could have, if they had been able to delay filming until they had a script, it could have been a much stronger film. Maybe. Mm. So, and looking Jurassic at Park, oh, sorry, uh, the the original Jurassic Park, I, I couldn't find anything that said how long like pre production took, but um, filming took place between uh, August uh, from August to November of ninety two, and then post production lasted until May of ninety three. So they were working on that thing to the wire right well and so i uh, Still so quick. i i am uh i'm unfortunately too well versed in the production of jurassic park because i watched that documentary of its production way too many times as a kid it was mm. three full years a lot of pre-production time like the, and i mean it's a little bit different because they're probably not building animatronics for this my guess is that everything's going to be cg because mm. that's kind of how gareth edwards generally rolls yeah like he was a cgi like he was a cg artist before he was a director Mm -hmm. So, and I think he uses that very well, but in direct with when they were making Jurassic park, they were working on the script for a long time. Stan Winston was already doing the designs and building the animatronic dinosaurs. And they were figuring out how they were going to do the special effects. They were also building that technology from the ground up though. I was going to say the the animatronics were, I mean, the animatronics was mostly tech. They already had from prior movies. The CG was being built up. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I think three years is a pretty long time. I think a more normal time from what I understand nowadays is more, like two years but like it does seem it seems fast my my instinct it just it seems fast given that they didn't have a clear vision for like who would even make it like i'm wondering Mm -hmm. if david kept like maybe like you said emily like david kept just had an idea and wrote the script and Mm -hmm. like handed it to the executives and they were like okay well this as alex joked before the video was being recorded this will make two more billion dollars okay (laughs) and then they were like just calling everybody they could get to direct it Mm. um Maybe I, I just I, I I have like that's the only thing that gives me some caution about I mean like I have some caution about this in general because I think this could go a lot of ways but a lot of the ingredients look good they've mm-hmm. got some very solid performers in it um, oh yeah that, I, and, I keep a good kind of forgetting that Mahershala Ali is in this and he's phenomenal he's right Academy Award registered trademark nominated um, so looking at a recent film Alien Romulus principal photography was 44 days and its total production time was harder to find what i'm what i'm finding looking at is it seems that a year to two years is 
the average. Hmm. All right, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not as short as I was thinking. I guess I it's sh- just the suddenness of this whole movie occurring. Is yeah, sure. And it could be also that we're so used to like these like eight phase announcement movies where it's True. like oh, there's oh we're telling yeah, it's like mm. oh they're pl- oh the next uh, uh, comic book movie for babies is coming. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Blade is coming up. Right. Yeah, but like, right, like the plan thing is like, we know about these movies like five to six years before they happen, and we're just kind of like, oh yeah, so they must be working on it the whole time, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. Also, Little Shop of Horrors, the 1960 version was shot in two days. That's awesome. Okay. Well, the I, 1986 I, version was not. <laughs> yeah, my and I, I, I'm not talking about the principal photography mm-hmm. timeline, which sounds like totally reasonable. It's like, it seems like very little pre-production, and my concern is that means there was not a lot of planning. But what it mm. could mean is that the movie was self-explanatory enough that they could keep going and they could defer a lot of mm. decisions to post, which is is fine if that's what like Gareth Edwards knows how to film for VFX things. So it's possible they have no idea what the dinosaurs are going to look like right now. They've got the artist working on that concurrently, but they also understand how to film it so that no matter what the design is, it'll be fine. Mm-hmm. And that would yeah. not be I I've never made a movie, so I don't know. That would probably not be how I'd want to do it. Yes, I'd you want have, to... James. <laughs> well, yeah, I made. I made yes, I've seen films. the movie you made. We all yes. know you have. <laughs> <laughs> don't sell yourself no, short. Yes. There. Well, I was. I was the editor. I was. I was not involved with pre-production on that film. Uh, what's the What's the uh, name people use? You'll be a uh... Alan Smithy. You're Alan Smithy. Um, yeah. No, but. I, okay, I, and I'll, I'll let this point go because I, I might be wrong, and if I am, that's fine. Obviously, but no, but it does it, seem fast, right? Yeah. It, it's it, it, right. I would personally, if I were making a Jurassic Park movie, but maybe that's because I'm a huge fan of the franchise and a big dinosaur nut. I would probably be like, let's work out all of how this is going to look first, and then not have like have more than a few months of pre-production before they start it. Like mm-hmm. principal photography started like I think a month after Gareth Edwards signed on. That mm-hmm. feels like a very rapid crunch to start the movie. I don't know that that'll uh, like it could be fine. Gareth Edwards also had his start as like a guerrilla kind of indie filmmaker doing a lot of stuff outside of the traditional studio system. And no, so it's no, possible the gorillas that, was in the next Kong. <laughs> right. It's possible. That's all he needed. You know what I mean? It's, it's possible that he's just like, okay, yeah, I'm making a Jurassic park movie. We'll go film in Thailand. Like they, all they need is a jungle and a couple of rudimentary sets and that's okay. Mm-hmm. And maybe, you know, and honestly, if this is a very small feeling movie, that would be very fine for me because I think that movies have gotten far too large. I completely agree. Uh oh, uh, Mister Mister uh, Serious Filmmaker over here. I also I just, agree. I miss I miss eighties movies where the protagonists are just people and the sets are just places. Hmm. Uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. Eighties, nineties films. I think you know, like. I don't want I don't want an Avengers feeling. Uh, there it Park is. Movie. Sorry, I know. Well, and like kind of kind of related to that point, I like the the two, it's only two images, but the two images we have look very different from like the Avengers movies and Jurassic World movies and stuff. It doesn't. It feels like the color is different. The shots are different. There's mm-hmm. like it just looks different. Like I know this is. This is not paleo, but it reminds me, at least the one still, where it looks like real colors mm-hmm. and just like an environment. It reminds me of how, like, when three of us went to see Top Gun together, the new one, and afterwards we're like, what the hell was that? Was that a really good movie, or is it just different from everything else? No, it was <laughs> very good. Called? No, it was very, to be clear, Top Gun never kicks ass. Um, but I, it, it reminds me of that, where it's like, oh, it just looks different. Like, because that's something mm-hmm. about that movie that I like, because it just looks completely different. And, and by looks, I mean, like, literally the color, the saturation, the lighting is different than these, like, sci-fi blockbuster things that have saturated the market recently. It's right. compelling evidence that you can literally just completely ape an entire act from a different movie. And if you do it cool enough, no one cares. Right. It's just, like, the end of that movie it, is just Star Wars. Right. I, I, I think I turned... Scott, was it you I was sitting next to? And yeah. I was just like, they're doing the trench run? Like, yes. that's, that's the like entire plot one of the pilots of even movie. survives. Like, with right. the evil guy. His plane gets mm-hmm. damaged and he spins out. And I'm like, oh, God, is he going to show up in the next one? Nameless. Right. Nondescript cool. country. <laughs> fifth, fifth generation fighter pilot. Sixth <laughs> generation fighter pilot. Oh, sir. yes. I, um, I'm watching on my other monitor the Battle of Scarif from Rogue One. And, um, oh yeah, I, yeah it looks like, good. It right, looks amazing. It, it looks very good. Like I, 
I don't. Uh, while I like to quote the Red Letter Media video mocking Rogue One, I don't really agree with the sentiment. I actually like that movie. Um, I do too. But regardless of right. what you feel, okay. plot wise or Star Wars lore wise, I really like it stylistically. Oh, no, like it, it, I think it yeah. might be the best looking of any Star Wars movie that's come out since Disney bought them. Mm. Yeah. I'm not, sure. I, I'm not I, sure. I'm not sure. That's well. That's why I said might because the yeah. other candidate's Last Jedi, which is filmed, the other one's I, Last Jedi. Last yeah. Jedi is more cinema, cin, like cinematographically interesting, and I think it's prettier. But and I think it doesn't benefit from what Ro- Rogue One benefits from, which is that Rogue One gets to use all of the Imperial era assets, yes, which yes, are yes, more yes, ingrained yes. And, and cool so, and, and cool. So like from a pure like visual fidelity aspect i think rogue one might eke out last jedi a little bit from like shot composition and like beauty it's last jedi no question mm-hmm. there's that scene when it's like the panning shot as the multiple ATATs are being downed in the, on the beach in the water where like they just feel like they're really there i know they're fully cg but like again gareth edwards i think having a really strong background in visual effects what <laughs> you called them ATATs. what are they called alex <laughs> What are you, they called? You did a you did a three beers. <laughs> oh, did I? Are they, what do we call them? Adats? Is that it? Or? No, no. It's actually much stupider. Uh, are you watching the scene right now? Yeah, I am. Yes. Uh, look, look closely at the adat, as you've called it. Okay. What? I don't know what I'm supposed to be seeing here. There's, well, you, there's, a, there's a difference from the the half at at <laughs> Is it's it an at a c t sir? It's an all-terrain armored cargo transport. Okay. <laughs> Which you can tell because it's got a big space in the middle to pull cargo. We are, uh, we are making personnel changes at the skeleton crew. <laughs> <laughs> Which honestly, I, like thinking about for two seconds makes no f- sense. Right, why? Carry the, <laughs> carry the giant machines of war in a bigger machine of war that moves more slowly than any of them would alone. We love this. Uh, yes. But no, it just, it, it's, I, I'm very tentatively excited because I know Gareth Edwards excels in this kind of domain. Yes. And I think that, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't want to like, I don't want to sound like one of the people who just hates on the Jurassic World movies, but I always found them very like, at best visually, like overly sanitary and at worst kind of styleless. Yeah. And Where's this? I, y- this won't be that. And I'm very excited. Yeah. Like, I mean, and it, very sanded down. They feel very, very much like the less compelling Marvel movies like that in my regard, where it's all very clean digital photography and there's no, compl- like the lighting is all very simple and all of that. The, this is going to be more stylistically interesting. And I'm excited. I cool. thought that of the new Jurassic World movies, the one that I remember actually having thoughts of like, oh man, they actually had some neat shots in this was objectively the messiest one. Yes. It was Fallen Kingdom. Fallen Kingdom, yeah. Fallen yeah. Kingdom had yeah. some really good shots well, and also, some really good um, like composition and stuff. And it, and, it was And, and the nice. director of that, I forget his name, was like a director who J. has J. previously... Bayona, yeah, J.A. Bayona, right. He has previously directed visually interesting movies. So, yeah. yeah. I, I remember uh, the, the introduction to that with like the... Um, the, the whole Moses, the Mosasaur getting out and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, there were some um, there were some pretty good segments in it. Yeah, with like the the guy turning around in the thunderstorm cool. and uh, talk about dramatic lighting of like looking back at the helicopter trying to yell at them about how he can't hear him on the radio and then the lightning flash and the, the T Rex. I'm like, that was fun. And, that was um, good. And the the cinematographer of this, which is I always find a thing that I like to look up, um, mm-hmm. is John Matheson, who also was the cinematographer for Gladiator. Good movie. Um, Robin uh, Ridley Scott's Robin Hood, which is not a great a, movie, but it's very well it's made. It's very well shot. Yes, um, the movie Logan that came out recently. Oh, that's a good looking movie. A- and oh. uh, Gladiator Two. Also, it appears to be a good looking movie. But I'm also, apparently, so hyped for Gladiator Two. I'm very hyped for Gladiator Two, and also Detective Pikachu. <laughs> no, Detective Hell Pikachu looked yeah. really good. Did it? I I didn't mm, see it. It did. I, I did. I liked Detective Pikachu. James, can, can we go in costume as the Orator and? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Give our review. Gladiator. Chew. Chew. <laughs> yes. We go. We go as the Roman. The traitor, here. Mark Anthony, <laughs> where he worships okay. dogs and reptiles. 
James started doing that, by the way, like when we were still sharing the office with I no know. explanation for a little bit. I was like, what are you? I've never seen these movies or anything. Well, that's from a show. Yes. Or no, you, just, you, were saying, you were saying things and doing that. I was like, yeah. what are you doing? Like, why? No actors. Prostitutes, prostitutes or <laughs> unclean <laughs> trans men <laughs> may attend. All, all mocking or whatever should be kept <laughs> <laughs> should be kept to an appropriate, appropriate minimum. minimum. <laughs> yeah, made only with the finest Roman grain. <laughs> true, uh, true bread for true Romans. Okay. Uh, yes. So, um, so I'm excited about that. Me too. Um, I'm now, also tentatively excited what the dinosaurs are going to look like. But sorry, Alex, it sounds like you had something well, of substance I go- to say. I, I was going to say, um, I'm, I, I'm interested and excited, even, about some of the choices that uh, this plot might reveal yes. about, uh, well, that the plot reveals. One, I personally, not because I hate fun, but most of the, most of the dinosaurs released uh, in Fallen Kingdom would die within like a few years. Uh, and I do like the idea that while there are still dinosaurs in the wild, um, they are restricted to a wet, warm area, which is generally what the habitats of dinosaurs were. Now, there are exceptions, obviously. Uh, there are dinosaurs that were comfortable in temperate settings. Um, I think it's important to keep in mind that even at its coldest point in the Mesozoic, it was never now. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I mean, the coldest temperature in the Mesozoic that we're aware of, like, is basically like New England climate. So, you know, there was ice. We know that there was ice sometimes during the year. Right. Um, but yeah, for a number of reasons, I don't think dinosaurs would do super well. No. Um, and honestly, I don't think they would do great in modern tropical forests either. But if you oh, put no. a gun to my head and said, where where are they surviving? I'd say, I don't know, probably, probably a, a tropical forest somewhere. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, a, a grassland is an alien landscape <laughs> to a dinosaur. Oh, I mean, that would be the worst place for them. They're not equipped mm-hmm. to process yeah. Temperate grass. Temperate forests, maybe. Um, but also, like, a lot. if they're in the U.S. specifically, there are a lot of uh, temperate cities, and the government would simply say no <laughs> and blow them up. Yeah, we can't have these here. So, yeah, if they're, in, if they're in hot tropical settings, I think that works a lot. It's harder to get them out of, out of a jungle, um, you know. There, there are a lot of ways you could float it. I don't mind mm-hmm. it. I think it's fun. Um, two. Now, dear viewer, you might be listening to the video and saying, hey, that plot of them looking for the DNA of the three biggest dinosaurs seems stupid. Silly. Only, only a little bit. Silly. As Dalton and I have both, both know from facts and also James and everyone else, uh, <laughs> This is actually good and makes sense. I'll allow Dalton to explain. Right. Well, so there, there is a phenomenon. <laughs> it, it, it is good and makes sense. There's a phenomenon. One that I was not aware had a name. Alex, what's the name of it again? It's um, Pe- Peto's Paradox? Pe- Pito's Paradox, Pito's I think. Paradox? Yeah. We're going to pronounce it's it's Pito's the second Paradox. One. <laughs> it's Pito's Paradox. The rem- is important. I remembered yeah. it because I'm like, it's got a stupid name that sounds like that. <laughs> um, it's Pito's Paradox. P-E-T-O apostrophe S. Pito's, Pito's Paradox. Um, but the, I- it, the idea is this, is that like, if we consider cancer as a disease, like it is unregulated cell growth. And barring any other extrinsic factors that would increase an animal's risk of getting cancer. So not, not like, you know, exposure to environmental carcinogens, not exposure to radiation, et cetera. Uh, if, if you just purely think about various animals, having more cells is a higher risk factor of them developing cancer in one of those cells. And so it would follow that larger animals should have higher incidences of cancer. And within a given species, that seems to be the case. Bigger individuals of one species will often have higher incidences of, of cancer than lower than smaller individuals. But across species, that is not what we observe. Um, There's a reason why all of the people, who, all of the like people who've who've lived to extreme age, have been under six feet. Yeah, right. They've got fewer. Cells. I'm getting there. Ha! <laughs> we're, all, we're all making it. No one here is six feet. The last yeah. Yeah. James is the most yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, James, so James will be the one. J- James will be the one who lives the longest. But can you really call it living from down there? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but 
But yeah, so we don't observe, however, that really large animals have higher incidences of cancer compared to small animals. Things like elephants and whales have shockingly low incidences of cancer, given what we would expect for how big they are. And so it seems that large animals evolve mechanisms to inhibit cancer. And, and we've actually observed this in their genomes and <laughs> in their DNA that they, they have, um, I'm not, I don't fully know mechanistically what they're doing, but um, they have I cancer mean, suppression genes, essentially. Right. I mean, we, we all do like the, yeah. um, the, the, you know, unfortunately nowadays, many people are like, have to be aware of this, but like the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes that are like, they, these are loci that are associated with cancer with particular versions of the genes. Those are tumor suppressant genes. Mm -hmm. The reason that the mutations are associated with cancer is that like, if the, if they are not functioning properly, then it, it, there's a high likelihood of developing cancer. But, it, it, but so is it that like the large animals have more tumor suppressant genes or that they're supposed to be better in some way? There are a number of explanations there are, um, or a number of proposals. There's stuff about metabolism. If I recall, maybe metabolic differences being a reason. Um, I think there are a few types of uh, different cancer genes, cancer suppression genes that are yeah. suggested to be involved. Um, I guess they're just, they work good. It's kind of like deers, right? Like deer have pretty good cancer suppression genes, right? Yeah. Because of the, because they, they make bone them. cancer with their heads. Mm, yeah. 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 They're, they're like, we got to keep it right here. <laughs> mm -hmm. So but anyway, yeah. the, the point here is, uh, I bet sauropods have really good cancer suppression genes. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So, well, I guess that, that dovetails in. They said, uh, they specifically said the biggest of the sky, land, and sea. So Quetzalcoatlus. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mosasaurus. And then a sauropod. See. It's going to be T-Rex. It's going to be T-Rex. <laughs> or maybe Spinosaurus, because everyone wants Spinosaurus. Well, to well what back. if Spinosaurus is the aquatic one? I have a thought. What's your thought? That they're returning to an island with a discovery hidden for decades. You I mean Site B? Yeah, I think that's where they're going with it. Because how else, like, like it's like, are they aquatic dinosaurs, uh, uh, you know, quotation marks, or do we get wet spinosaurus? So, well, on that point, I would like that a lot, actually. Someone, so cool. someone pointed out in the um, the thing that Paleo Twitter is really, really good at. The second that a new media thing comes out. Of tearing zooming and enhancing, zooming what? In. Zooming in and tearing it apart, and like, zoom yeah, in and enhance. Like, and yeah. apparently, the flare that Mahershala Ali is holding has an engine logo on it. Well, That's where they a, got it from. There's a, there's a sticker on the pole. Oh no, it's a sticker on the thing behind him. On it. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to say I recall oh, yeah. seeing another aisle. I recall one of you guys telling me at some point that there was a cut section from one of the most recent Jurassic World movies about like plesiosaurs or something attacking a boat. I think there was. This was a speculation on our part, but yeah. A speculation? Yes, this this was in the Elasmosaurus video to explain how ugly that thing was. Never mind. Pay, pay yeah. it no mind. Well, no, I remember. So it's not only it's not only that. I remember I read the leaked plot of Jurassic World Dominion before it came out because I didn't care. And I just wanted to know what was going to happen. And there was most of the leaked plot was very accurate, but it specifically mentioned a segment where like in, I think in the harbors of Malta or something, they would have to fight like aquatic dinosaurs, as it was said. Okay. And so it could my be my guess is that the, like the evacuation may have in a prior version of the script been like onto a boat. And then like, they would have had to deal with the elasmosaurs and then they would have gotten away or something. I, I don't know how it would have gone, but I think I that my guess is that there was something that was supposed to feature plesiosaurs that was cut. Okay, Amelia. so I could see that as like a reuse thing, maybe. You had something. I was just going to say on the note of the Jurassic World, Al Elasmosaurus is the monster looking one, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If that thing showed up in full CG on a movie screen, I would be so excited. <laughs> oh, yeah. <It'd> be great. <laughs> it would be so yeah. cool. Um, this, I have, I have one... I'm going to vo vocalize, should I vocalize both of my complaints or just one complaint? Vocalize both, sir. Okay. I'm going to vocalize both. And I'm going to start with a nitty gritty thing that doesn't really matter because it's a movie and like, who cares? I, I hope that this description isn't fully accurate as to what they're looking for from these dinosaurs to develop a wonder drug, which like, 
I don't think it's a stupid idea to be going after them to like look for that. I think that has some scientific backing and it's like, yeah, we're well, fine, whatever. That being like, oh, they need the DNA samples. We cloned them. We made them. <laughs> yeah. We should have the genome know? on a hard drive. Some, like, somebody, was, somebody, uh, somebody lost the hard drive they put it on. But aren't all those companies defunct at this point? It's got to exist somewhere, though. Well, like Biasin is. I forget what one of our, which, which of our patrons it was, but one of our patrons, credit to you, I don't remember who you were, brought up maybe it's because, like, all of that was seized by the government and unavailable, like, because th- theoretically, like, after, ev- like, shit hit the fan, theoretically, everything would have been seized or locked out or whatever. Yeah. No, that's, a, that's, a, that's a possible. If they have an explanation for it, I'm fine. Um, it's the same problem, I, uh, another big problem I had with Fallen Kingdom, of them having to go back to retrieve the Indominus Bones to get its DNA. It's like, you made this. You made you it. have the guy who made it working <laughs> oh, for right. you, yeah. making the other thing. Like, he should just have this on, like, ten hard drives that he's backed up, and he's got to have one at home. Like, for people who are unaware, like, if, oh. like... DNA. Oh, we, can, we store DNA sequences on hard drives, but readily. They, they, they answer, a text they answer file. this in it's... Camp Cretaceous. Oh no! Oh, oh ew! That doesn't okay. count. They do. They do. I was, was going to try and give a more informed answer, but if Camp Cretaceous already. No, Camp I, 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 I could be wrong. I'm pretty, pretty sure. There's at least there's a subplot about um, Wu coming back after the whole thing happens uh, with the Indominus to retrieve his laptop to get data on it from the hybrids and yeah. they end up the kids end up stealing his laptop and destroying it. Okay. Well, Spoilers. Then the lesson here is back up your data um, <laughs> because also, this like, need to happen. <laughs> do they have the genome before the animal is incubated? Because it's like, theoretically, if you're blending things, you might not have the resultant genome until it has developed. And if There'd they were... Be... But they would still have their blood samples and, and that information. Well, I mean, but they you also know. wouldn't... You wouldn't be able to create the final embryo unless you had the genome recorded. Like, you're, if you're sequencing everything and then synthesizing an embryo, like, well, you'd have the Well, I guess it depends on how exactly they're making it. You see, uh, like, yeah. because of recombination, that's what I'm getting at, is like depending on how they're actually creating the physical embryo, you don't necessarily know what its genome is going to be. I, I mean, I don't think it's going to recombinate. Like, if you're well, synthesizing no, the full genome, like, you'd be creating just a... You, like, the recombination would happen when the gametes are being produced. Well, that's why right. I'm trying... I guess I'm trying to articulate my thought here. Of, like... Because I guess I don't, I don't know enough about real-life cloning to know, like, at what stage... Up until what stage do you have the genes? Because at a certain point, you have to form the embryo. And that is two sets of things that have to come together. Like, unless... Yeah, I mean, th- there is, I mean, you can synthesize the full... Like, you can synthesize yeah. effectively the, the full... My understanding of how the cloning is working is, like, they're not mixing... They're not mixing gametes because that wouldn't be cloning. They're taking the full, yeah. like, the full genome and implanting it or, or stimulating a cell with the full genome to div- to yeah. divide as an omnipotent stem cell, okay. yeah, yeah, or a pluripotent stem cell rather. Um, the god cell, on the right. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, but no, I, I mean they would, and I mean certainly though they would have like because if it were a real company, they'd be patenting the genomes, so they would have like mm-hmm. even if they did need to wait for the animal to hatch, like they would be that would be uh, item of business number one is collect a blood sample, sequence it, and patent the genome. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. which is to say that like. For real scientists, for, for real science, like people who work with genetic data don't need to collect fresh DNA every time they do it. Like sometimes people do for various reasons if they want to sample something different or a new species or something like that. But if you're like, hey, I want to look at the genes of all of these species, more likely than not, a lot of those species will already have had their genome sequenced and that data is publicly available and you can just download it. It's mm-hmm. just they're there. <laughs> this wonderful thing called GenBank. Yeah. And it is, uh, it's the thing we've been basically, every time we're like, paleontologists need to make their shape data accessible, we're trying to emulate GenBank, where if you, it basically, it, my, my partner is a uh, molecular biologist, and as she has said, if your genome isn't on GenBank, effectively your paper doesn't count. And that is a, a, just a wonderful difference from the way our field works. <laughs> yeah. But suffice it to say, 
I hope that either there is a good explanation of, oh, we need the DNA because all these servers are destroyed or the government sees it all. Or I think a better explanation would be like, hey, like these dinosaurs are like, like they've got the this these properties that make them resistant to cancer. Like it's in their genome, but they're synthesizing some compound and we can't figure out like how it's being synthesized like biochemically. And we need to sample it from them like in living tissue. Like that makes sense. Sure. Why not? Right. Hopefully, yeah, there's, I, yeah, hopefully there's some explanation for it. That's that's my like minor nitpick complaint. My bigger kind of the the thing that makes me the most worried, a little bit, and it's it seems unfair to say a little bit, frankly, is uh, the uh, oh my I'm bleeding from my head. Oh, what's up? <laughs> my genome is is expressing. Um, <laughs> is that uh, you don't need to say the G. You can just call it a gnome. <laughs> <laughs> the G silent. <laughs> My, my my genome, Gnomeo and Julia, um, <laughs> is a uh, no. My, my my kind of other issue is just that like I I totally get and am totally on board with the dinosaurs now being like restricted to like the equator. It makes sense. I've got no like logical flaw with it. I don't think it's like bad. I do think it goes a little bit against the grain of the spirit of how the final movie ended. Um, and it, it, it captures a certain sense of nihilism that's very Crichton-esque to me. And so in one respect, that's very appropriate. Like Michael Crichton, in both of his books, makes it clear that the dinosaurs are going to die and that they, they are not going to, to be around. Right. And, and with He's, ideas specifically about like that they're not really suited for life on this yeah. planet. Mm. Well, right. Yeah. Well, the idea is that they're not suited for life on this planet and also that the Costa Rican military hates them and is going to air them <laughs> on the island. Um, <laughs> Napalm. But like that, the, the kind of Crichton nihilism and, and bleakness is interesting in the books, but it's eschewed in the movie with some of the, the kind of early universal and especially Spielbergian kind of hopefulness and optimism and frankly, I think that makes it better. I think the omission of some of the, the Crichtonisms of the, the book make the movie better. And I think it would have been nice to have that kind of injected into the franchise again, um, as opposed to this direction, which isn't inappropriate, but just is maybe a little dour. And I'm not trying to be like, you know, movies can't be sad or negative or anything, but like, I think it, it would it's it's less in keeping with the spirit of Jurassic Park in that sense, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. I mean, the movie's not out. I'm not like I'm I'm totally not judging it on this. It's just something that gives me a little bit of um, a little bit of concern. See, right, you, you heard it here first, everybody. What what Dalton's primary worry is is that this will not continue the spirit of the final shot of the Jurassic <laughs> series being Sinoceratops running uh, free as God intended with a herd of elephants. Yeah. No, the other, and, oh, go, so, no, 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 no. That, that, that was it. Yeah, but other, no, I do. I do. I'm so on board with you uh, yeah. on this, that I, I, I don't want this to be a dour, like nihilistic type of movie Um, i mean not like my gut says no if they end up doing that like i would kind of love if there was a jurassic movie that made me cry i think that would be rad like in a really good like well thought out way i mean like hell i mean another one of the movies that we brought up this um that was made by the same people who did this, or at least some of the same people. Logan, one of my favorite movies oh, yeah. of all time. Oh my God, that is so bleak. That is so dour. I love that movie with everything I have. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, the only Jurassic Park movies that make me cry are the originals because they make me uh, weep for a time in my life. I was happy. But that... <laughs> um, I do think it's a little bit of a sim, like, it, and possibly beyond, like, any kind of connections to a Crichton-esque idea of, of the dinosaurs, there is also the possibility that they were grappling with the same thing that I've grappled with is I've thought about like, Oh, how do you make an interesting movie about now dinosaurs are everywhere? Which is, I don't really know if you can <laughs> like, I'm sure you could, but like, I think it's, it's tricky. <laughs> and so I don't blame them for being like, actually <laughs> they're not everywhere right. anymore. Because right. It turns out like, what do you just then that's just going to be a regular movie but there's also dinosaurs <laughs> yeah th- like have you heard the original idea for spielberg's like alien movie like not alien the franchise but they movie about aliens is it the one that would become et yes is it 
Oh, I, I, I thought it was going to be the one that became uh, Klaus Encounters. Well, uh, no. Well, I think it. I think DNA of it went into like different things. But the original movie that became AT, the designs were like leaked at one point. They were. It was going to be an interesting movie. The premise for the film was, I think, that it was a family living in a remote area, like in Hello. a cabin of some sort. Hello, Hello. Alex. Um, I think they were living in in some sort of remote area. Maybe they were on vacation. But basically, mm-hmm. that there's aliens that are like in the area. And they're like doing whatever science they're doing. And one of the aliens is a baby that gets separated from the rest of the group. And it winds up being like kind of cute enough that the human children in who of this Mm. family, like are like, what's this lost little animal and don't like presume that it's an alien or something, but they want to take care of it. Like when you find a baby bird that Mm -hmm. you like, you want to like take care of, even though you don't really need to do that with baby birds, but I digress. Um, when I met all of my friends here, no, right. Exactly. (laughs) Um, and then the, after that point, apparently the movie was basically going to be some sort of a horror movie where the b- the aliens were terrorizing the family in the house trying to get their baby back. Mm. And this got split into two concepts. It became the poltergeist and E.T. Okay. Oh. And, this, and I've always thought this would not be a bad idea. It was actually, I wrote about half of a novel during my master's that was basically this idea where it was like, forget how the time travel happens, but a dinosaur family gets translocated. The kids think it's a baby bird because it's a theropod, so it's got feathers and it's like a baby thing. (sighs) And then the entire story is basically like, you know, I was was 22 writing this, so obviously it was like a dromaeosaur. But it's like a dromaeosaur parents trying to get into the house to get their baby back. And it's, you know, like, I've always thought that's that's not a terrible premise for a smaller dinosaur-focused movie. No. Yes, Alex? Isn't this the plot of Mac and Me? I don't and know. And also Nuki, sort of? I've never seen either said. of these things. I've never I even heard of <laughs> Nuki. Alex, remember that, <laughs> Nuki. Remember that Mac and Me, the, the families are separated for almost the entire movie. Oh, that's um, true. They're not the, trying the, to get the... The parents, all the aliens except Mac, are just wandering around hopelessly in the desert, like, baking in the sun. But they and do Mac do. is having his wacky adventure with the kids at McDonald's. <laughs> Anyway, <sighs> this is not a very unique plot line, obviously, but I don't think there I don't think it's impossible to make like I think to Dalton's point, if you were trying to make an interesting movie that was like dinosaurs are around in yeah. the world, it would have to be small things like I that agree. where it's like very, very intimate, not big scale, like, you know, you don't get a lot of mileage out of that, but like one parents of Jurassic like one couple of Jurassic Park Velociraptors trying to get their chick back from a people who were holding it for whatever reason could mm. be a very scary and effective movie if done right yeah. it would have I much think, more like alien you, vibes than anything are you else. allergic the to making the two billion movie? dollars <laughs> well i don't think that wouldn't make a lot of money i mean the alien franchise is, i don't know how alien no, romulus is I, doing actually but it's doing okay it's doing well. very well but alien um, romulus is also not small it is no. like it's every alien movie i think to that point if in you know theaters aren't really comfortable with showing these kinds of movies, so it wouldn't get a theatrical release, so they would never be made because it wouldn't make money. Right. Um, but if they did an anthology of of short, like 20, 30 minute shorts that are kind of like Battle at Big Rock things, where it's like, hey, dinosaurs yeah. are in the world, and here are some scenarios of people dealing with them, that'd be awesome. Right. Oh, I yes, yeah. I mean, but yeah, I mean, right. I don't know if Jurassic the Jurassic series is. I mean, those are cool ideas, but I, I think it's. Right, the first Jurassic Park movie wasn't like a small thing. It was the biggest movie ever made and enormous yeah. in scope and vision. It's no, just yes. that it's crept so insanely since then. Yes. Right. That now no, it's like, I, oh, that's a, you know, that's straightforward a movie. movie. It's like on an island. There's a park. Nice. Yeah. Simple. No, I, I mean, Alex, we weren't saying this would be better. I, you weren't here when we started the conversation. We were just saying. Oh, it could like, be better. No, I think it might right. be better. Well, it might be. But we were, we, I, this emerged from Dalton making the point that, um, you know, we don't know how interesting you can actually make a movie where the point is like dinosaurs are alive and people have to deal with it because like dealing with it would in, would presumably involve drones gun. and, yeah. and gun and uh, get, a or cult. They, they, get a cult. If the dinosaurs are within like 25 miles of a coastline, the U.S. Navy will have something to say, say to them. The only fatalities in the entire movie will be the Osprey gunship that crashes into the ground because that's no, their not, second main function. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> to kill U.S. Marines. Any, yeah, not a dinosaur. It just crashes. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, we got it. Stuff. We killed the T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll get Donald Trump at the end being very sad. 
Yeah, barring anyone else having any last remarks, I'm excited for this movie. I have I one too. final remark, if that's okay. Um, but remark. I know we want to wrap this up. Um, I'm encouraged by one aspect, or, or multiple aspects here. I like that this movie is trying to have a science fiction plot. And mm-hmm. I think I, I think this is something we kind of said previously. I, I can't say that that means it will be a good movie. We don't know that yet. I, I hope it is. But I do like that they're trying to find some sort of, like, or hopefully are finding some sort of plausible science fiction reason that the plot would happen and something yeah. that works in the universe rather than doing like, I don't know. It's why the one aspect of Jurassic world dominion that I actually don't hate and don't really get the criticism about the is locusts. like the, the locust yeah. plotline is one of the most plausible things that the Jurassic franchise has come up with since the idea of cloning dinosaurs, which is not like, that's not inherently insane, especially given that we didn't really know the breakdown rate of DNA at the time. Like, According to Michael Crichton, and I don't know how much he could be trusted on this because obviously it, it benefits him, but he apparently did talk to geneticists about it and they were like, I don't know, that sounds like it would work. Like, you know, we, we didn't know how fast DNA broke down at the time, I don't think. And so, mm-hmm. like, that would be the main thing. But assuming the DNA could survive, it's a fairly plausible idea to bring dinosaurs back. To try, at least, yeah. yeah. Well, right. knowing Michael um, Crichton, he also asked them, Is the DNA angry? <laughs> Is it sad? <laughs> Could it be sad? Yeah. Could it be Michael full Crichton of hate? Was not dude. Yeah. Um, but in any case, like the the locust plotline is uh, is a movied up version of what we know biotech companies do. do. Like mm-hmm. you know, like the it, there have been many concerns raised about the idea of like pollen from genetically engineered crops not mixing well with environments and causing widespread damage. Or like not being able to be cultivated unless you buy other products that could unlock like the actual growth factors. There's a lot. Uh, there's a lot of stuff there, and I think the locusts are. It, it's kind of silly a little bit to say, yeah, we've genetically engineered locusts that will eat everybody's crops but our own. But uh, for a movie that works, that's a that's a good movie way to do it. Not like the weeds. The wheat simply will not grow unless you also you buy, buy our food. fertilizer. Yeah. Like which which would be the kind of like mundane capitalist evil that I'm sure we're about to be living with. Yeah. Um, I, I will hear. The, oh, sorry. Go, Amelia. Yeah. The, the main criticism I've heard of the locust, which I agree was one of my favorite parts of that movie because it was actually plausible and interesting. Uh, and the main criticism I then hear is that, well, it's a dinosaur movie. It's like, this is the same problem with a certain Netflix documentary is a lot of people were upset simply because they were expecting more dinosaurs, to which I say, grow up. I, I will. I, there's <laughs> one thing I will say is- to, in favor of that criticism, though. First of all, we're a dinosaur YouTube channel. <laughs> it, is, it is kind of a dinosaur movie. I know. Yes. No, but, but here's the thing. I, I do agree that I, I think the locust driving the plot was fine. Mm-hmm. My problem with the script of that movie is that it, it falls very victim to the... There's a famous speech that the guys who wrote South Park gave, which contains like basic writing advice that's very helpful, that a plot has to be a series of this happens, so this happens, and because that happens, something else happens. And mm-hmm. you could cut out every scene in that movie where there are dinosaurs, and it would not change anything about the plot. You yeah. would sl- be slightly confused as to why people are in the areas that they're in, but that usually doesn't matter because the people find each other anyway. And like, my problem is not that the that the locusts are driving the plot because I think that that's a fine thing. I-, I did feel that the plot completely it was completely irrelevant that there were dinosaurs in it because every scene with the dinosaurs is they appear, they roar at the screen, they chase the people, the people get away, and then they start the next scene. And Two billion dollars. I know. Listen, <laughs> listen. Uh, no ethical consumption under capitalism alex it's like i just the movie would have still made two billion dollars if it had had a series of logical linkages that meant like oh because claire got chased by the therizinosaurus something else happens not like by coincidence she happens to find everybody else again Mm, it's just it's not great it's it's just not great writing but i just do like that there seems to be a science fiction thing here and also that something about the dinosaurs inherently like climate tolerance is being considered in something that's driving the plot yeah that to me is a good sign that there's some thought going into the script and they're trying to come up with a compelling like inciting incident and premise and also the idea that they're being used for medicine like dalton and alex were talking about completely makes sense if they go a cancer angle um they also also could could be relevant to anything uh, I, 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 when we were talking about it earlier, I actually left out um, one of the other things that might be related to the uh, 
lack of cancer to, to the low cancer rates in giant animals is apparently it's been proposed that they have short telomeres. Hmm. Um, so that, maybe that would be a big deal if you could uh, right. get the people. Right. Yeah. You could, you could basically prevent some aging and, um, or no, will, that would telomere shortening is what causes aging, right? They have long yeah. telomeres. Mm. No, no. I think they have short. I think the idea is like that the cells like have a, they, they will die after a certain point. Like, oh. like so they don't accumulate a mutation i think is I the see. idea okay. mm-hmm. I, i'd have to i'd have to yeah. like read the literature oh, but that's what sense. i remember before we I, my, my last thing is in the criticisms uh, just earlier of dominion of, of the like sci-fi plot uh i will hear none i will hear no criticisms of a plot about a large biotech company doing something cartoonishly evil when ha, uh, there's a man putting chips in a monk in monkey torturing monkeys to death <laughs> So you can like get emails in your eyes or some. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> right. These, I, like, I can't wait for my work emails to go directly to my eyes. He built a stupid tunnel under Los Angeles you know, so they I, wouldn't uh, make a train or some. So shit. I, I, I will, I will say um, to defend that criticism for a minute. I don't think that this is that the criticism of the locust plot line isn't that it's unbelievable. I don't think that this is like a, a very very hindsight funny terminator thing of like oh we were thinking of oj simpson but well gosh darn it we can't picture him killing anybody so <laughs> we're not gonna pick him let's pick arnold schwarzenegger this is from um, the the flashbulb memory in me where after uh after norm mcdonald died i played for amelia every single one of norm mcdonald's clips making fun of oj simpson oh i watched office. i watched a super cut that was i think 25 minutes <laughs> after oj like died that. it was right. great that's um, it's man it sure does suck when the man who would die for you kills you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, of, of all of the, the criticisms I've heard of the locust plot line, I haven't heard anyone say a company wouldn't do that. Fair enough. Right. Yeah. A, a, a company be evil. No. Perish the thought. Perish the thought. Um, uh, a video be over. Yeah, yes, uh, the, <laughs> the video is over. over, and the video is long enough that I think we uh, should thank our patrons. So I'm going to just pull up our patron list really quickly to because there's been some updates recently. Um, oh my God, six notifications on Patreon! Oh no, what's happening? Oh, these are all okay. good. These are not cancellations. <laughs> these are people are joining the Patreon, which I like. Yeah, we had a, we had a couple of those recently. We did. Um, and we have we have new patrons, so welcome all new patrons. And if you've never seen this before, your name will now be in the uh, credits of this video that are rolling. And if your name is Benjamin Seepser, nickname Philip Fico, Christopher Bellis Jones, Aaron Anderson, Adam Molos, Blacklight Virus, Camphibia, Dan O'Kyrus, Dino Dom, Kevin Prem, King Zashu, Max Ironpaw, original username Pythonic, Ryan Wants to Die, Swamp Ape Science, Wanderer, or Wheat, your name has just been spoken by me. Um, I repeat. I'm not going to repeat it. Um, so you, your name was spoken by me because you are among our most generous patrons who, in addition to all of the benefits of lower tiers, get a spoken shout out at the end of every video. Um, I want to take this opportunity to, I'm sure on behalf of the whole Skeleton Crew, thank all of our patrons for supporting the channel and allowing us to keep doing what we do. Um, we will be covering the new Jurassic Park movie closely. And and I, I hope we can cover it more closely um, Steve, if you're watching, help us out, please. Please <laughs> help us. Um, but Brusati, anyway. please, Brusati, please. <laughs> Br- Steve Brusati, please. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, it'll. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to cover it more closely. But even so, we'll be covering this with a lot of interest, and uh, hopefully, get to all go see this movie together next summer. Um, just like we got to see Jurassic World Dominion together uh, a few years ago now. Yeah, that'd yes. be great. That was a fun time. I'm sure uh, we can work. We saw like Jeff Goldblum. That was. I hope we get to see Scarlett what? Johansson. I guess is the most famous person. Yeah. yeah. Theoretically, no, because I never mind. I was going to say theoretically it would align with my defense, but it's not going to. It's going to be after. Hopefully, theoretically. I'm sorry. All right. Well, that's well, good stuff. Well, if the movie's bad, that might be a good thing. Anyway, yes, good stuff. We will see you all yeah. next time on the Skeleton Crew. Um, just a fun joke. We said this video was going to be 15 minutes long, and it's an hour. Brevity is the soul of wit. And we. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>